Hey there guys, it's Mr. Herbst here, and today our focus is going to be on heart anatomy and the heartbeat. Now we're going to start here with talking about the external heart, or the outside of the heart. Here's one thing that is uh, sort of difficult for a lot of people to understand. Uh, this side of the heart over here, which appears to be on your right, is actually the left side of the heart. And over here, which appears to be on your left side, is actually the right side of the heart. Now, you may be wondering, why is the right on the left and the left on the right? Well, when we talk about the anatomy of the heart, we are actually talking about it as if it was inside the person themselves. And so what you're seeing here, guys, is actually the front side of the heart. So it would be as if my heart is in my body this way, the left over here and the right over here. Um, it just so happens that your heart is more positioned more towards the left side than the right side. Now you also may look here, you know, you have some, some blue things and some red things. The blue things are primarily veins and the red things are primarily arteries. But what's kind of weird is right here, these two red things are actually veins. They are the only veins in your entire body that are oxygenated. And we will talk about that for um, in the next video. They are oxygenated because they actually come from the lungs themselves. But one thing to, uh, very important to understand here is that um, the heart is a muscle. And like all muscles, it needs to have supply of oxygen. That oxygen comes from uh, right here, the coronary arteries. These, uh, there are two coronary arteries. You have the right coronary artery and you have the left coronary artery. You also have the right coronary uh, cardiac vein and you also have the left cardiac vein which bring the blood back to the heart. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, three major uh, types of heart tissues. The first kind is the myocardium. Now, um, as I often say with science, it's very important to use your root words. Myo is a Latin word which, which means muscle, and cardium, not surprisingly, is a sounds like cardiac. It is a root word that means heart. So myocardium, muscle, heart. The myocardium is the heart muscle itself. The pericardium is another tissue that, um, once again, use your root words here, Peri means like on top of or upon, so uh, it's the tissue that is upon or on top of the heart. Um, here is a the picture of a pericardium. The pericardium is like a very thin layer of membrane covering the heart. And between the pericardium and the heart is a fluid-filled area called the pericardial fluid. And that fluid there actually allows the heart to be, um, it allows for the heart to beat with less friction. It allows the heart to not stick to organs around it, which is very important because if the heart is beating all the time, and if it suddenly got stuck to one of your internal organs, that would be bad. You know, we wouldn't want that. So the pericardium allows for the heart to beat very um, uh, non-friction, or very frictionless. The next type of um, tissue we're going to talk about is the endocardium. Again, use your root words here. Endo means in or inside. The endocardium is the tissue that's on the inside of the heart. Next, we're going to talk about the four major heart chambers. They can be broken down into two uh, types of heart chambers. We have our atriums and we have our ventricles. Atriums are on the top of our heart. So everything I'm circling here is the two atriums on the top of our heart. And everything on the bottom here is the ventricles on the bottom part of our heart. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase that for a second. The right atrium once again this is one of the most difficult things to, for people to understand is on our left side of our diagram here the right atrium is number one right here blood enters in through the right atrium from there it goes into the right ventricle and then it goes out to the lungs comes back into the lungs into number three here which is the left atrium 
and then from the left atrium it goes to the right ventricle and then out to the so moving on here uh we are going to now focus on the heart valves there are two major types of heart valves they can be broken down into the atrioventricular valves and the semi lunar valves now once again use your root words here atrio stands for atrium and ventricular stands for ventricle so atrioventricular valves uh, separate atriums from the ventricles those are right here and right here um, they are there are two of them one is called the tricuspid valve and one is called the bicuspid valve they are called the tricuspid valve because the uh, root word there tri means three the tricuspid valve is anchored in three different places the bicuspid valve is anchored in two different places but bi means two the bicuspid valve is also sometimes referred to as the mitral valve. The semilunar valves are, are valves that um, control blood flow out of the heart. Uh, we have two of them. One is called the pulmonary semilunar valve and the aortic semilunar valve. The pulmonary one is right here and the, semi, the aortic semilunar valve is right here. Uh, we're going to focus on that a little bit more in class. Just know there are four major um, uh, valves to the heart. I'm going to somewhat switch gears here, and I'm going to talk about the heartbeat, or the uh, sometimes the heartbeat is called the cardiac cycle. Now, here's one thing to understand, is that atriums and ventricles don't contract at the same time. The atriums contract while the ventricles relax, and the ventricles contract while the atria or the atriums relax. Um, one thing that you might have heard of before is this thing called systolic and diastolic. Systolic uh, and diastolic, probably you've heard of that before if you've ever taken your blood pressure. Systole refers to the amount of pressure inside of the heart chambers while they're contracting. And diastolic refers to the... Um, the pressure inside of the heart while they are relaxing. And then also the heart pulse is um, the pumping action. It takes about one second to, uh, to feel it. So you may go up here on your neck and you can feel your heart pulse. It takes about one second or so to feel that heart pulse. Uh, and that is the two-part pumping action. Uh, my next... Uh, my next focus here is going to be on actually how the heart beats. The, the flow of nervous signals or electrical signals through the heart itself. Um, the heartbeat is actually initiated by the sinoatrial node. Uh, sometimes we refer to that as the SA node. Uh, that is right here. If you go ahead and take a look at that, that is located in the right atrium. Um, that is an area where there's a big bundle of nervous fibers, and so um, a bunch of electrical signals will, will go down in the SA node, and as soon as enough electrical signals build up, the sinoatrial node will fire, and it will cause both atria to contract. After they contract, the signal will be sent over to the atrioventricular node, which is also sometimes referred to as the AV node, which is right here. Um, as soon as the signal is strong enough, the, it will cause the ventricles to contract, which also makes that lub-dub sound. Uh, the the lub sound is caused by the atria contracting, so the lub, and then the dub is caused by the ventric the ventricles contracting. So first thing that's contract is the sinoatrial nodes, and then the next thing that contract is the atrioventricular nodes. I'm going to take a look over here at this picture. I, I'm sure at, at one time in your life you probably actually uh, saw a diagram like this. This here. Um, is an uh, EKG printout of um, the heartbeat of a human being. Uh, you can actually take a look at the, um, the lines here. They actually do represent something. That first little dip that you see right here is called the P wave, and it's represented by the contraction of 
the atria right here, which is uh, given off by the, once again, the SA node, the sinoatrial node fires, and it causes the atria to contract. The next thing here is what we call the QRS complex, and um, it, it, it is when the ventricles are firing, contraction of the ventricles. So once the signal from the SA node goes down here to the atrial ventricular node or the AV node, it causes the um, ventricles, both ventricles, to contract. And then finally, the T wave is actually more of a resting phase. And so that up and down sort of motion that you might have seen on computer screens before or, you know, the lack of it, that, you know, when somebody's dead is actually um, the measurement of the heartbeat itself. And more specifically, um, the measurement at which point at which the heart is at. Anyway, here, guys, that concludes um, the heart and the heartbeat. This is Mr. Herbst here. Make sure you complete the Google form below. I'm signing off, folks. You all have a nice day.